The very first project in the Arduino Projects book that comes with the official starter kit from Arduino.org is interesting because it actually doesn't use the Arduino for anything except a power supply. Let me put part of it together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. A quick note on LEDs before we get started putting this together. So you can see this is kind of a standard 5mm LED. You'll notice when you look at an LED that the legs on the leads are not the same length. So you can see, if I can get it to where you can see a little better, I think it's a little clearer down here. One leg is longer than the other. That's because LEDs are polarized. That is, they have a positive side and a negative side. In this case, it's called the anode and the cathode. The longer leg connects to positive. The shorter leg connects to negative. The longer leg is called the anode. Again, that connects to positive. The shorter leg is the cathode, and it connects to negative. Okay, so let me slide in the board here. You can see it. So you can see that I've already connected a red jumper wire to the 5 volts pin on the UNO. And I've connected a black jumper wire to one of the ground pins on the UNO. And then I've connected those on the breadboard to the positive rail. Now, you'll remember that on a breadboard, all of these are connected. So all along there is, a, is connected. And all along here is connected. But they're not connected this way. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the LED. Now I'm putting the anode, the positive side of the LED, towards the top of the screen. I'm using a 220 ohm resistor. 220 ohm resistor is the one that has red, red, brown. That last one is gold. That's the tolerance. So we have a 2 as red and 2 as another 2 with the other red. And then that third brown means times, <coughs> times 10. So we add a 0 on there. So we have 2, 2, 0, so 220. Okay, so you can bend these. I actually a lot of times prefer to bend them using pliers but for the sake of visibility in the video I'm going to bend them with my just with my fingers so you bend them to where they're straight and then we plug it in from the same row as the LED so I don't know if you can see that very well in the, in the video but we have one side of the resistor connected to the positive rail and the other side connected to the anode of the LED because remember each one of these rows of five is connected so the normal the normal space on the breadboard they're connected in rows but not across the center so this is connected to the anode of the LED then we're going to use a little jumper now you can use whatever color you want uh, Traditionally, in DC power circuits, we use black for ground. I'm going to use blue because they don't have a black one that's a good length. And blue is sometimes common to use as ground. See what I did there? Common ground? Oh, you don't? That's okay. So, right now, so once you apply power to the board through the USB cable, then power immediately starts flowing to the 5 volts rail. And the ground, of course, is connected to ground. In order to make a whole circuit, you'll have to go all the way from voltage to ground. The way the current flows conventionally in this circuit, this is not how the electrons actually work, but in the convention, if you're more curious about that, go look it up. The electrons flow through this red jumper, over to here connecting to the red power rail so all of this red line is lit up then we pull current through the resistor this resistor is to limit the current so not as much current flows into the LED so that it doesn't break then electricity flows through the LED which lights it up 
and gets to this blue jumper, which connects back to ground, goes down the rail to the black jumper connecting to ground. So the circuit is complete and we have the LED turned on. All right, this is the second circuit in the book. And in this edition, it's on page 26. This is also just a simple circuit. The only thing that's been added from the first circuit is a button here. So we're still not using the microcontroller at all. We're connecting directly to the five volts and the ground rail. No data pins are used. And if you push the button, the LED turns on. So what is happening here? The electricity, again, this is conventional current, not the way that electrons actually flow. If you care more about that, go look it up on your own. Flows through the red wire, down the power rail, through the resistor, the resistor again is to limit the current so the LED doesn't break. Then it hits the switch. Now when the button is not pushed, it stops right there. No more electricity flows. The circuit is not complete. When you push the button, the circuit is completed. The electricity then flows through the red jumper, through the LED which powers it, then through the black jumper to the ground rail through this black jumper all the way back to the ground pin on the UNO. That's how that one works. Very simple. Okay, this is the example of a series circuit. A series circuit is one in which the whole circuit is in one line. There is one loop. It's really easy to tell that from this circuit. So. The electricity flows through the red jumper wire, down the red rail, through the resistor, which is again a current limiting resistor. Those flows through this switch if it's pushed. So when I push one button, nothing happens because it's still blocked by this resist excuse me, by this switch. So if I push just the second button, then it's still blocked by the first. So in order for the LED to turn on in a series circuit, both buttons have to be pushed. That way the electricity can flow through both buttons. So it flows through there to ground. Okay. Pretty straightforward, easy peasy. This next circuit is an example of a parallel circuit. So we have actually two circuits going on in parallel. So let me see if I can walk you through what's going on. So of course we know power and ground go to the two rails, right? So the resistor connects from power to this row 10 right here. Now, so that can flow straight to this button. Then on the other side of this button, I changed the colors all up here so it's easier to talk, talk about. It, go, it, can, it can go directly from the other side of this button to the yellow jumper through this excuse me through the yellow LED through the purple jumper so if I push the first button the LED turns on okay in it otherwise the electricity can flow through the red jumper now the red jumper is in the same row as the first pin of the second button then if you push that button the electricity can flow through the orange jumper also to the LED so it'll also turn it on so you with a parallel circuit we can either push one button the second button or even both buttons and the LED will turn on definitely pretty cool that doesn't always mean that you always want to use a parallel circuit depends on what you're trying to do and it's important that you understand the difference between the two the last thing that is discussed in Project 1 is Ohm's Law, which is an important law and relationship in electronics. We're not going to take a lot of time to go through all the details. The basic that you need to know is that voltage equals current times resistance. You can use that relationship to solve a multitude of circuits. And that's one of the reasons, that's one of the ways that you figure out what value of resistor to use for your LED so the LED doesn't break. Because each LED can only have so much current. And so that's why we have to use a resistor. 
you can use Ohm law, Ohm's law to figure out how big a resistor. You look at the data sheet to find out how much current that this resistor or other component can have, and then that'll tell you the size of the resistor. That's just scratching the surface of what you can use Ohm's law for. You should definitely read up if you're interested in electronics and interested in learning more. Thanks. Have a great day. Get out there and make something happen. If you have enjoyed this video and gotten something out of it, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more information about electronics and other awesome hobbies and things that you can learn, check out learninghobby.com. Y'all stay awesome. Bye.